All right, so basically, uh, just as an introduction, because I'm going to be putting this on YouTube, as long as you're comfortable with it, uh, yeah, that's I'm going to be, this is going to be a coaching session for X Big White, who is currently a Silver 2 support player that specializes in Morgana, but is basically looking to branch out. In his own words, he wants to be the second greatest support alive. So that's a pretty high bar. Let's, uh, let's see if we can start making some steps towards it. So basically, what I wanted to say before we get into the actual game is that I chose a Nautilus game, even though you have a 69% win rate on Morgana, because sometimes League of Legends is just a numbers game, and it seems like you haven't really found your elo with that champion particularly. Uh, you've got a lot of games overall, but you have a near 70% win rate on Morgana, which means you know what you're doing with that champion. Uh, sometimes right. win rates can be slightly inflated, like if you're only choosing Morgana into like really good matchups, but it doesn't seem like you're doing that. So I think it would be kind of a waste of time for us to coach your Morgana until you play more games. Like eventually that win rate will drop to a more reasonable like 50 to 55% win rate, but right now you seem to be right. doing well. So let's look at your Nautilus, which doesn't seem to be quite as uh, on par. <laughs> So, I don't have many games to play as him, that's right, why. Right, right, right. So this will be a good learning opportunity, because I can teach you... Like, this is basically... This is the type of champion that I specialize in, right? Like, high CC, okay. hard engage, tank, high impact. And also, more importantly, this is the type... Whoops. Uh, this is the type of champion that is super, super in meta right now. Uh, this is the strongest type of champion. Um, mo mostly because, one, you can win lane, but two, more importantly, you can roam. So those are the two things that I'm okay. going to be teaching you how to look out for instances to do. Uh, so in my coaching sessions, I like to point out the bad, but I also like to point out the good. Love to see you not sitting in fountain. I even saw you try to hook to get out early. Love the love the hutzpa there. <laughs> but um, so we're stacking. Looks like we're wanting to invade with the Nautilus, which is always a really really good idea. Um, what one thing I do do want to say is that when you're invading, I always ward over this wall, like because if we're going this way, because we want to be thinking about, uh, and this is going to be a recurring theme in all of my. Uh, throughout the entire game. You want to be thinking about the absolute worst case scenario. So we're all over okay. here. There are two entrances to your jungle, right? This one, very, very heavily yeah. warded or very heavily covered with you, guys, with you guys, about to be four of you. But absolute worst case scenario is that the other team is just as prepared for the invade and they're invading you. So worst case scenario is you've got five people right here and they're going to be walking into your jungle. Um, so this is good. Not warding here is bad because let's say you go over here and you don't end up finding anyone, then you're kind of boned because you have to walk back into your jungle. You may not walk all as five and you have absolutely no information uh, about who has been over here. So let's turn on both visions. Um, okay, so we see Ezreal moving over. So we're moving into the jungle. This is good. This is good. This is good. Okay, but look at this. Right. You guys don't have vision of this because we didn't drop the ward. Okay. So, looks like Ezreal went over and warded, and if we dropped the ward, we would have vision of that, and we maybe even would be able to cut him off here and get the Ezreal. So always just drop that ward. I like this though. I really like the uh, the the invade. You guys have a really really good invade. Okay. This is bad. I don't know if this connects or not, but it's. No, I don't think yeah, it Nautilus's does. hook is like really, really wide hitbox, which is good because it usually means you catch champions that you wouldn't otherwise catch. Like you always hear people complaining about the Nautilus hitbox, but in really tight, confined areas like this, it will almost always hit the wall first, which is super frustrating. And if you had just autoed him here, you would force him to blow his flash, and then you can follow it with hook. Okay. Okay, so. This guy's going to get away. If he if he has a pulse, if he has fingers, he's going to flash over this wall. Whereas if you would uh, yeah. open up with the absolutely unmissable auto attack and then followed with Q, he'd be dead for sure. Now, he may still be dead, but, you know, we had to blow flashes and stuff like that. But, yeah, definitely just open with the unmissable. Yeah. And that's like, that seems like kind of nitpicky, but honestly, you can apply that to so many champions. Like, if you watch me play Leona, sometimes, or, or Thresh, Thresh and Blitzcrank are really, really great examples. Have you ever played Thresh and Blitzcrank, and like, you're running at someone, uh, not... and, and like, they start dodging left and right because they're predicting the hook, whereas you are just running in a straight path towards them, and then you hit them with the unknock, like, the unmissable flay or Blitzcrank knockup. It's called dodging themselves to death. So if you remove the chance of you misplaying like you can't misplay your auto attack right just minimize yeah. the uh the chance of you misplaying and you can do that with a lot of tank support same with like leona e e and q you can't miss her q so if you have the option to q her first just do that all right we're cutting them off that is a pretty that's a pretty good hook 
All right, nice. Not great that you took the kill, but yeah, all good. All right, really, really good start. Zero two, and we're in a uh, really, really great matchup too because we've got two squishies. Uh, one of them is a mobile, and you're Nautilus, who specializes in absolutely reaming those types of champions. And you have a great ADC that can follow up. So I want to see you guys push for the level two power spike. Because champions like Nautilus, Leona, Blitzcrank, Thresh, these hard engaged CC types, they thrive in level 2. It should be a kill in this lane level 2 almost every single time. Especially because Ezra was going to be missing C uh, CS and experience, so he's going to be behind. So we get this wave. You can even be walking forward and zoning this Lux, because look, you killed Ezreal, so he's going to be like a little bit late to lane. Okay. I like the bush control though. It's good. Whoops. When should I, because since like when I'm playing him when you get relics, when do I hit minions? Like, is there a certain time? You can or... do it on the first wave. Uh, it's more efficient to do it on this wave. If you save your relic shields, which you do have two up, you should be getting these three minions with them. Because do you know what's going to happen when this minion, this minion, this, and this minion dies? Our wave's going to push? You're going to hit level two. Or... Okay, okay. So they're thinking they're pretty safe right now. And you may still be playing in an elo where people really don't respect the level 2, but that's perfect. Because if you start learning how to abuse the level 2, you're, you're going to be playing against opponents that don't respect it. Like, in a, in a good elo, okay. people will be seeing that they're you're going to hit, get uh, level 2 first, so they're going to start respecting it, aka running away. Uh, but they aren't at all. So if you use your relic shields on this one and this one, you instantly hit level 2. But you're not using your relics at all, so you're not help pushing for it. Right. So this one dies... Now you need to start walking this way. You need to start running at them. Because the second Tristana kills this one, you hit level 2. So the level okay. 2 power spike, by not going in here, it's effectively wasted. There is absolutely nothing they can do if you just walk at them and throw a hook right now. Like, Lux should never ever be able to exist, like, within your hook range. Even still now, she still hasn't hit level 2. N nice look on the Ezreal, but remember, Lux is the target here. She's immobile, she's squishier, okay. um, yeah. Like, Ezreal can get, like, a little a little squirrely, a little hard to kill. Lux, there's literally nothing she can do other than flashing your hook to survive. So, you want to more, more highly prioritize the Lux than the Ezreal. Okay, the only reason, like, I went for the ADC is because when I first started playing, the guys that played before, they tell me to, like, uh, go for ADCs first. Yeah, and that's, like, good general advice because later at later stages of the game like a lot of the game's meta revolves around which team's adc is still alive but in laning phase right. they're both a 400 bag of gold they're both just as easy to kill uh and they're both just as valuable if it i mean honestly the support lux is probably doing more damage at this stage of the game until ezreal gets like two items like this right here she should never ever uh, she needs to be playing in the minion wave because nautilus hook doesn't pass through minions the fact that she is right, right. here that you can draw a line from you to her she should ne yeah there you go bro there you go boom boom um you probably want to start going e second over w but i do like that you okay. knew to do the auto reset do you know what that is do you know what you did it was my w auto reset it? yeah yeah, so you go in, you, you hook right here, boom, you auto, and then you press W as soon as you auto attack, which means you basically get another auto attack really, really fast. That's that, that's okay. what an auto reset is. So that was good. Um, I would highly recommend, especially if you're in a kill lane like this, where you have a lot of kill pressure on champions like Lux, to go E, because even if she flashes out, uh, you catch her with the hook, you use E, and then she's slowed. And just because she flashes, that doesn't mean that slow goes away. So there's going to be more scenarios where that E is going to lead to a kill on the level 2 power spike. So I would say that's the absolute most important thing we've seen in the coaching so far is know your level 2 power spike. If you're playing a champion like Nautilus, you absolutely have to abuse it. You are stronger than any champion in the game, especially these two champions at level 2. Okay, okay. Alright, but great. You blew Lux's uh, flash. Her flash isn't up for uh, 5 minutes. We're just kind of dawdling. It's fine. It's fine. All right. So, what can you tell me about this timer in the game? We're three minutes uh, and twenty seconds in. Uh, 
Jungler might be ganking, maybe? Jungler is absolutely going to gank. 99% of junglers are going to gank in the timer somewhere between 3 minutes and 15 seconds to 3 minutes and, like, 50 seconds, depending on how fast their clear speeds are, depending where they're ganking. Typically, if they started top side, that means they're going to be ganking bot side, at three minutes, like around this timer. I, we, we don't have any information on Kha'Zix right now, but we can assume he's either going to gank top if he started bottom, because he's going to path like this, and then end up here at like three minutes, 30 seconds. It's a very, very, it's like the most basic uh, jungle pathing. So you always want right. to be warding, or at least playing with the awareness that the jungler is going to gank in this time in this time frame. Until we see him top, we have to assume he's coming bot. And one uh, one easy way to tell which way they started, like which path they started. So, do you think that Lux? We know for a fact, actually, Lux and Ezreal did not leash. So it's a safe assumption right. that because of his bad start, where he where Kha'Zix died in the invade, he probably just went to his blue. So he probably passed down mm -hmm. like this, and now he's looking at bot lane like a big old juicy snack. So it's good that we warded. But this ward isn't actually going to save us from the gank. We're going to see Kha'Zix when he's right here, and by the time that he's right here, it's too late. Uh, the only reason this would be a good ward is if you are, like, under your turret. But the fact yeah. that you have them under their turret means that they can't contest any of your vision. Which means, like, you know, we, we had the minions touching the turret earlier. That's your timer to walk up here and ward the, this try. Because this will actually give us okay. vision of Kha'Zix when he's right here, or right here, and that will save your life. Like, if Kha'Zix did indeed, like I think he did, started blue and is now pathing bot, he's going to be showing up here pretty soon, and this ward isn't going it, to... It's too late. So okay. this is another really good pick on Ezreal. Nice. Uh, one thing, and again, I'm going to get nitpicky, because that's how you improve. Oh, yeah, of course. You Q. But you don't actually land the root. You, I think you cancel your auto attack and then you E and then you auto attack him here. You want to be chaining that oh. Q into the root because a good Ezreal is going to E out of it. And that, if you give him that quarter half second where he's not chain CC'd, where your root isn't leading directly into your, uh, where your Q is leading directly into your root, he's going to E and he's going to be repositioned and then you can't root him. Right. So just make sure your Q auto attack, then E, then W. All right, so let's see where Kha'Zix is, because he's got to be ganking something. Remember, we're in that time frame, 315 to 350. I'm telling you, 99% of junglers are going to gank in that time. Okay. And there he is, and there he is. And this ward saw him too late. Right. So let's see how this plays out. We miss our hook, that's fine. It's getting a little fiesta E. Looks like Tristan is going to kill Ezreal anyways. Hopefully she, she Ws out. Okay. So, you know, you guys happen to actually win it on their gank, but y you still weren't aware that the gank was coming, which is the problem. Right. Uh, also, definitely don't queue into this. You don't win this. Yeah. But that's just, you know, decision making, which is fine. But yeah, now you know going forward, 315 to 350, and, and that's a game changer, I'm telling you. Because once you start thinking critically about where the jungler is at, it will change all of your actions going forward. It informs all of your decision making because you're thinking like, oh, the jungler is top. I can definitely fight in these next couple of minutes or, oh, we don't know where the jungler's at. I'm going to chill out. I'm going to play passive. Maybe even take a reset. Uh, okay. While we know he's, where we don't know where he is. Okay, so next thing, you never, you almost never, when you're playing a champion like Nautilus, one of the biggest, best ways to uh, in, um, impact the game as support is roaming. So you very rarely want to actually just be walking straight back to bot. Even if you end up there, even if you end up there eventually, you want to be start get into the habit of taking this path right here. So you want to go from here to here. And once you get here, okay. you're kind of at a crossroads. Like if your mid laner happens to be here, you can gank them, or your mid laner's not there, so you can walk back to bot. But very, very rarely do you want to just walk back to mid. Because what this does is it places you in a point in the map where you can impact a lot more of the map. Like, let's say a okay. fight breaks out right here. Lee Sin starts fighting for Scuttle, and the fight goes on for a minute. You're not going to be able to go from here to there, but you will be able to get there if you're here. So right. definitely start pathing here. Uh, if you watch my high elo gameplay, I almost never, ever, ever pass straight down the bot. Um, and it's just one of those things that, like, people do it in, as, as an autopilot without right. really understanding why they do it. 
Like, yeah, you're here to get this experience, I guess, but honestly, giving Tristana solo experience is even better than you than you soaking it because you okay. don't have enough information to actually go in and fight here, so you're not needed immediately in bot. The only reason you would be walking straight down to bot is if, like, you think that she's getting dove or something, but she's completely fine. Okay. Well, I notice sometimes because, like, when I play, I think I uh, roam a little more with Morgana, mm -hmm. which, I mean, I don't know if I should or not, but... I get my bots sometimes always, like, trying to ping me back to lane all the time. Yeah. Like, if I'm trying to help somewhere and else. And it's one of those things that, like, you don't want to be taking advice from players that are as good as you or worse than you. Right. You want You want to be, you know. But, yeah, it is a little weird because Morgana, Nautilus is actually a much stronger roamer than not, than Morgana. Morgana is more really? of, like, okay. a like a counter-engage or, like, a pick-and-poke type champion or a black shield bot. Uh, yeah, these these types of champions, Nautilus. I'm telling you, if you if you get good with these, Nautilus, Leona, even Pike, Thresh, Blitzcrank, they are the best roamers in the game, and they are some of the strongest champions in the game because of that. They're strong uh, laners. What about Alistar? Yeah, Alistar as well. He's in that same category as well, for sure. Okay. Because when I first switched to support, that's who I started playing with Alistar. Yeah, Alistar. Yeah, Alistar is very very good. And all these things we mentioned. So just to reiterate, uh, where we're at in the coaching session, the two biggest things I want to talk about is always be thinking about the worst case scenario, such as jungler and the that 315 to 350 timer. Um, and really, that's not just that. The worst case scenario thing, I'm telling you, you're going to get sick of hearing me say it because I say it all the time. Because once you start thinking about it, you apply it to everything. And it seriously does just like inform all of your decisions. Like all the way back to the level one. Worst case scenario, we got to ward this because what if someone's over here? Worst case scenario, yeah. what if Kha'Zix is ganking right at 320 and we don't have it warded? Worst, you know, all those worst case scenarios, like, it really will change the way you play this game. So, uh, and then another one, big, big is the level 2 power spike. You got to start abusing that. You got to start, uh, because it happens at the same time every time in the game, right? You get the same static set amount of minions, and once you start recognizing that, you can start moving forward even before the minion dies. Catch okay. so many players off guard. And then roaming. This roaming timer. Roaming uh, path. Okay, so we're starting to get pretty low in lane. Not like dangerously low. So a lot of players are going to think that uh, because she's chunked you to half, that you can no longer fight back. And she's going to start to get a little bit cocky. I guarantee this player, like, at some point steps up into this bush. You can still 100 to 0 her. In a Tristana Nautilus lane, you shred her. Especially because yeah. you know for a fact her, her flash isn't up until 8 minutes. We blew it at 3 minutes. So right there, right, I knew it. Every single player does this, bro. They always think, oh, I, I poked him a couple times. He, there's no way he'll, like, he probably went back or he's too scared to fight. She's once again, there you go, bro. See? Good. See, I missed my auto. Yeah, again. yep, and that's okay because we know it now, and we're gonna start focusing on it. You're probably uh, canceling your own actions by putting in, like, pushing all your buttons at once, sort of thing. Okay. Just make it a smooth movement. Q, auto, E, W. There you go. You did it that time. All right, but that was good. I love to see you. Absolutely, she di she disrespected you. I knew she would. All squishy Lux players do. Right. And yeah, you you are never quite... Nautilus is one of those champions that, like, he's never quite as killable as he looks like he is. Even if you had, like, this amount of health, your Aftershock gives you buku, ridiculous resistances, and you've got W. And, well, you don't okay. have heal, but sometimes you'll have heal up. But yeah, he's never quite as killable as he appears to be. Him and Leona both. People always overestimate, like, how hard it is to get that last one half of health. Because getting the first half was, was really easy, right? They were hitting you when he didn't have Aftershock. Right. So, people are players are going to uh, again. She disrespected you again. I should have just been another so kill right there. Just went up? Okay. Yeah, mostly because we know where Kha'Zix is. We know Kha'Zix is fighting in the top side. Uh, but right. yeah, absolutely. That was just another. Let's go in and kill Lux again. Free kill. And now, one one thing you can do here is you can start clearing the ward, and they will walk up and contest you for it, thinking that you're going to continue hitting the ward. And once again. If you can draw a straight line from you and Lux, she is not allowed to exist, my friend. Okay. But yeah, notice, like, you, you start clearing the ward here. Oops, I moved the camera, my bad. It's all good. So you start clearing the ward, and look, they get a little bit of a poke in. They're like, oh, he's just going to keep clearing the ward. That's, what, that's your opportunity to go. Okay. 
so much of League of Legends isn't really so much of League of Legends and climbing the uh, the rank ladder is just taking advantage of other people's mistakes, taking advantage of other people's ignorance, and taking advantage of other people's mistakes. Like she's ignorant to the fact that you can kill her, so you can kill her. Like if she if she wasn't ignorant to that fact, she would just be playing safer, and you would your amount of playmaking is like dropping significantly. But once you're aware that you can kill her here kill her there that's when you can take advantage of it so it's just like knowledge and taking advantage of people's ignorance is just so massive once again we should just be pathing mid but right we know that now and that's the every time thing right it's pretty much an every time thing i would say like eight or nine times out of ten it's just a really really good habit to build you'll find yourself being there for so many fights that break out in the river and you know you can you can maybe hit mid or clear vision out if they have any Okay, so right here, you want to be communicating with your jungler. I know you don't have control of him, and I know this is low elo, so players kind of have the mind of their own, but right. one massive advantage that you have is that you guys just bought and went to lane, and these guys have not bought. So any fight that breaks out, like right here, you could be fighting them, or more importantly, for the dragon, you can be fighting them. In low elo, fights kind of just happen for any reason. Right. As you get to mid elo, you know, gold, platinum, diamond... On high elo, they're going to be fighting for something. So regardless of which type of fight this is, you can win the fight. You have more items. Like look at this. She has one, two, three. She has, she has two damage. She has three damage items. This dude has a ruby crystal and a tear. Any fight that breaks out, you are going to absolutely massacre them. Okay. Especially now that you're six. So once again, just like you have a level 2 power spike, you also have a massive level 6 power spike. And that goes for all of the champions that fall under the same archetype that we've been talking about. Leona, Blitzcrank, Thresh, Pike, Alistar. Massive, massive level 6 power spike. So this Ezreal is once again disrespecting you. You can draw a line from him to you. There's no minions in between. The only thing you should be looking out for here is if Kha'Zix and Lux are in this bush. But she's backing up, which means Kha'Zix is not here. It's a little rough. See, this is what I was talking about earlier. Luck should, like, I know your friends kind of brainwash you into thinking you have to target the ADC, but this is this yeah. is one of the scenarios where targeting the ADC is, like, he's harder to kill. He, he's got a reposition move. It's, right. Oof. Yeah. But it's okay. Happens. Uh, just know that Lux is always going to be the easier target there. They're just as valuable. You get just as much gold for killing Lux. All right, Kha'Zix is dead. Uh, now, you want to be spamping this dragon. This is the objective. This is the play. Ezreal is going to have to shove this wave in, which means he's going to be... Oh, man, if he doesn't shove it in. Okay, he's shoving it in, which means he's going to spend the next, like, 20, 30 seconds shoving this. Another 8 seconds to recall. Another 20 seconds to get back out on the map. That's an entire minute. That's 40 seconds to a minute that you have to get the dragon. So you should be spamping this dragon. Don't be afraid to be the okay. guy that shot calls for the team. Do not be afraid to be the annoying person in solo queue that spam pings everybody. Because especially if your spam pings are making a correct call, it's really good for the team. So many players just play on autopilot, like hoping someone takes the lead. And if no one takes the lead, you just have five players playing their own game. To be honest, even if the call is a little shoddy, having all five players on the same team, like actually vocalizing this and, and taking a leadership position from the support role uh, is really, really good. Because I don't know if you've ever heard me say this, but I say this all the time. Five players doing the wrong thing is so much better than like one or two players doing the right thing. So even if this dragon okay. call isn't great, if you can get your jungler on board with it, your mid lane, your ADC on board with it, no one's shot calling for the enemy team. That's a very safe assumption. So, you know, you get the dragon. They probably won't even be there to contest it. Oh, wait. Just solo kill Lux? There you go, bro! Teacher, what's up? Alright, now let's get something off this death. Let's actually do something okay. with it. I'm going to be very frustrated if I see you sit here and recall or do plates. Because what we should be doing is going straight to dragon. This dragon. Yes, yes, yes. Even though Kha'Zix came down? 100%. Especially because Kha'Zix came down. We know exactly where he's at now. Information is power in League of Legends, bro. Yeah, you should 100% do something with that. Remember how I said earlier, fights break out in the Wheelow for no reason? You won the fight. Right. Now let's do something with it. Okay. Let's move up. Let's move up. Yes. Excellent. Now, I don't know who made that shot call, but in your future games, that's going to be you making the shot call. You killed someone. Now let's do something immediately. Oh, we pulled off it, though. 
That, that honestly probably would have been a good dragon to just finish. Oof. All right, once again, we're can yeah. Yeah, canceling the auto attack, but yeah. it's okay because you know it now. So it's going to be something that yeah. you can focus on to not do in the future games. This is probably not something you should be going back in on. You want to be training okay. yourself to be thinking about how the fight is going to proceed. Who wins the fight before you even go in on it? Right? So you should only really be going in on this if you think that you can actually turn this. At this point, I would be cutting my losses. Uh, Lee Sin doesn't have enough HP or resources to go back in. So once Lee Sin dies, you're not going to be able to 1v2 this. So it, right. it's just one of those things where you kind of like need to lo know your limits and be thinking about the result of the fight before you even move to it, before you enter it. Okay. And, 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 and once again, of... Galio did the same thing. He didn't think about how the re fight is actually going to proceed before he goes in. Right. But I think sometimes what I do, and, and, I, and this is probably a bad thing, is I try and save yes like my adc or players too much yes absolutely and they're gonna get mad because they're gonna meet ping you oh why aren't you going in it's sometimes it's just a matter of cut your losses and that will come as you play more and as you build your game knowledge like yeah. knowing which fights you actually win and which ones you don't but yeah doubling down on your losses is like one of the worst is one of the fastest way to, to lose solo queue games because everybody's trying to save everybody right right and and you know not all fights are winnable, so like cutting your lo yeah. See, once it's probably gonna happen here again. This Kha'Zix is should be dead though. Yeah, you do win this. Nice. All right, now nice. now we killed him. Now what are we gonna do? Should do drag. We should do drag. We should shove this in. Make sure Ezreal's stuck under his turret farming and is useless. Their jungler's dead, but we're not moving. We're not moving. I need yeah. to see more decisive actions and like you're winning most of these fights, bro. You've killed four people. You're winning most of the fights. That's not even the issue at this point. The, the problem is that you're not doing anything with, after you win the fight. And so we're just sticking around to like eat some poke for free, hoping Lee Sin wins us the dragon. I mean, it's, it's just fiesta fight. It is what it is. You, you know you should be here instead of here anyway. So I'm not even going to comment right. on like why we lost that fight or whatever. We should The fight shouldn't even be occurring. I'm a little confused why Lee Sin isn't using the Blast Cone, but this is really good engage and CC. Alright. Uh, yeah, honestly, you, no, 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 you, you, you're kind of balling out, honestly. <laughs> like, the the mistakes there were your teammates. That was actually really, really good. Okay. That was super good. Yeah, that's the exact role you should be playing as Nautilus. He's super strong uh, engage, super strong initiator, great shot caller, great front line. So like this, how my ADC is full health? Should I be roaming now, or should I just help the plate? You can roam. You can get the plate and roam. You can. I, if this was me, I would probably. I don't think mid is actually roamable because I think she's going to be shoved under a turret here, and it's a really risky dive. Right. What you should be doing is when you get timers like this, where you just killed someone, get the plate, and then get vision in their jungle. Okay. Like that is one of the best things you can do when you're winning a game or a lane. The rule of thumb is if you're winning. You want to get vision in their jungle, right? Because you have these timers where you know you're not getting collapsed on. You know, yeah. you know, worst case scenario, you see Kha'Zix and you walk the other way. Boo-hoo. Like, you're not getting caught by a Lux here or anything. She's dead. Um, rule of thumb is when you're winning, you war deep into the enemy jungle as deep as you can safely. Okay. Uh, if, it's an, it's a, if it is a neutral game or a close game, you should be warding as much of the river as possible. Because that's where a lot of team fights and scraps are going to break out, and it also can catch the enemy jungle like roaming into your jungle. And if you're behind, you should be heavily warding your jungle as much as you can, because okay. you know when you're behind, you're going to be like shoved into your base, and you probably don't have control of the river. And if you go ward it, you're probably going to get caught and die. So just be thinking of that uh, rule of thumb. It applies to the state of the game, like whether your whole team is ahead as a whole, and if you're just winning, winning lane. Like, the enemy jungle loses so much pressure if he has a losing bot lane or if his bot lane is dead. Because you can literally just walk in. Like, you see Lee Sin is doing this. So, right. yeah, just, I mean, it's your jungle for the next 30 seconds. Get some wards out. Okay, let's Kha'Zix's flash.
and you know, it, one, once again, it's just kind of a cutting your loss sort of thing. You get the Ezreal, you trade the one for one, that's fine. Maybe just use Q to run away at this point. She's dead. Okay. I'm trying to think, I don't know if I die on this one actually. Oh yeah, I yeah. Do. Happens. It's all good. We know we know to cut our losses in the future now. Alright, also Moby Boots. I don't know if you're just building that because pro builds or a guide tells you to use it, but the the purpose of building Mobies is to get them early and then to impact other lanes. We have not roamed okay. a single time. So if that's your play style or if you're, you know, not really sure on when to roam or whatever, you can just go defensive boots. Def defensive boots are really, really good. It, like Merc Treads would be god tier against their team. Like Ari, okay. uh, Lux, Vlad, once we get to the point of the game where we're actually encountering Vlad. Yeah, Merc Treads would be really, really good. Uh, but yeah, Mobies are for roaming. And they're very expensive. They're more expensive um, than like their Swifty Boots counterpart, which is good. But you, if you can afford Mobies, which you can this game because you got a bunch of early kills, you definitely need to make right. use of them. Because around okay. the like 25 minute mark, your Mobies are worthless. Because that's generally when teams like start grouping up and you can't make roams anymore because it's basically just like 5v5. So if you're going to get Mobies, you need to make a lot of use of the mid. You need to kind of like justify getting them over defensive boots. And obviously, feel free to like ask any questions that you have. No, yeah. Okay. Oof. All right. So these are, I mean, these are just like it's fiesta fights. It is whatever. Uh, we see Kha'Zix. We start backing out. Oh, maybe we don't see Kha'Zix because we're trying to go back in. Nice hook. Once again, just work on chaining that Q into your auto attack. That's like one of the uh, the strongest points of Nautilus is that he is like the king of CC when it comes to support. He has three different okay. types of CC. Actually, he has is it four different types? He's got his Q, which is considered a displacement. It's kind of like a little miniature Blitzcrank hook. You can notice that it like kind of brings them towards you a little bit. Uh, so that's a yeah. displacement. Your your auto attack is a root. Your E is a slow, and then your R is a knock up. So one, he's really hard to itemize against because tenacity does not uh, affect knock ups. So even if people buy Merc Treads, most of your CC still really, really screws with them. And uh, two, being able to chain your Q into your auto attack, into your E, into your knockup is just like god tier. It's like three and a half seconds of CC, which is like ridiculous. Plus the ability it has to like knock up other people in the middle of a fight. Oh, that was kind of cool kick. Yeah, but when I first started playing, I honestly I wanted to learn jungle, but when I started playing jungle like in ranked, I just I don't know, I didn't feel like I was doing like I was effective enough. Yeah. So I, so I switched to support and I've been doing a lot better. Oh, good. Well, it's probably just one of those things where you, you found your role. Jungle and support, I would say are the two, the roles that are most similar, but they're also like wildly different. Um Right. Sometimes when you play support, it kind of See, this is so good. Like you CC you CC'd Ezreal, and you're able to like heavily CC Lux. Like that's just god tier. I I still yeah. submit that was a good play. Uh, good eye, good aggressive play. This is the kind of stuff that will win games late game. The result isn't great, but I that was good. Good eye. All right, we back. We're trailing behind Lee Sin. We're trying to see if we can get anything after missing the dragon. See, this, this, yeah, this is when we're going too deep. This is way too deep. Yeah. You're going to be thinking about the worst case scenario, right? They have four people down here. We have absolutely no vision of any of them. And we're trying to go even deeper. Right. So. And this is another thing where I feel like, because I'm trying to save my jungle. Right. Yep. Just ping them off, too. Like, it. He may be a type of player that's receptive to, you know, saying, hey, let's get out of here. Let's not do this. But, yeah, if he goes in without you, definitely don't follow him. Okay. Like, maybe if your whole team was in on it, like, that, it's going back to that, you know, five or four or five people doing the wrong thing is better than one or two people doing the right thing. Uh, but your team is in absolutely no position to uh, cover you guys. So it's just absolutely, like, it's suicidal to go in there. 
So don't be afraid to, you know, ping them off. If you know better, like, you're talking like you knew better, but you're just trying to back them up. So you know better, let right. them know. Okay. Communicate. You see some pings. It's the best language in League of Legends, Pinglish. Learn to speak it, yeah. and it will win you so many games. But yeah, I, I really heavily encourage you, like, to watch my next game. You watch me on stream, uh, and look at how many times I ping. Doesn't Regardless of the elo, I ping so many times. I even ping I'm on the way. Yeah, I think this is your ping. You're on the way. This is such a good ping. Because it lets Galio know, let's go! Right? Because he may yeah. not have the map awareness to know that you're on your way. By the way, this is why this roam here, it, like this is why this pathing is so so good. Like you're on the you're you're on the map, ready for these fights. Regardless of this fight goes well or badly, you're here for it. Now, if you would walk straight to bot, you would be doing ex you'd be in the same spot as Lux. And how much is she contributing to her team? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Meanwhile, you know, you gave your team a really good fighting chance, and you ended up winning the team fight. Looks like, ooh, maybe. Yep. Nice. See? Good stuff. Good roam. <laughs> Kha'Zix. Getting a little cocky there, buddy. Yeah, I'm serious, man. Start pathing that way, and you're going to see that happen like three or four times more per game. And it's, it's just... You think I should start trying to play Nautilus a little more? Or like, who, who would you recommend? Nautilus playing? is good. I mean, I'm always going to be biased towards Leona. I think Leona is the absolute god of solo queue supports, especially when it comes to this yeah. play style. Uh, Nautilus is totally fine, too. Uh, I know some people have preferences between the two. I like Leona because it feels like there's a little less room for error. Uh, you know, sometimes Nautilus' Q can be a little wacky, a little, little weird to hit. And uh, yeah. also, Leona, the biggest advantage Leona has over Nautilus is that she can hard engage through minions. You don't have to wait until, yeah. you know, someone positions here. You Even if they're there, you can go in. So I like Leona. Um, but yeah, Nautilus, Leona, Thresh... You know, Thresh is a little more difficult than those other champions, which leaves more room yeah, for error. Same. I've tried him, and he just, for me, is just too complicated right now. Yeah, and that's fine. Start simple. Okay, so we are hovering between bot and mid. I like doing this a lot as well. Like, where you're not just sitting in bot, you're actually sitting here in case a fight breaks out over here, or here, or here. You're kind of in the middle. Yeah. That's good. You see the fight breaking here. Oh, nice hook, actually. Pulled it right out of the dash. Start backing up, start backing up. So you want to? You don't need to flash here yet. You're not in any dim, uh, danger, especially because you have Locket and Zeke. So this guy isn't just going to, like, auto Q you and kill you, right? So be holding on to your flash yeah. a little bit longer. Be a little bit braver. But also be thinking... Once again, about how you think the fight is going to end. How, how do you think this fight is going? Because it seems to be going pretty good so far. Ari tried to assassinate Teemo. She didn't get him. You disrupted him. Teemo got out. You've got Lee Sin coming from the top. Kha'Zix. Yeah, see, way, way too scared. Way too scared. Remember, right. you still got your aftershot. Actually, you, you used your aftershot. But Nautilus is way, way harder to kill. Kha'Zix is not just going to straight one-shot you there. So be a little bit braver. Because now you have a lot less tools to actually help out in this fight. But it's okay. Alright, game's starting to take a little bit of a turn for the worse. Uh, they're going to be getting their second dragon here. But it's definitely still winnable at this point. Alright, I particularly would not be walking top. Vlad is incredibly hard to kill and he's going to be seeing you from a mile away. I would be walking mid yeah. and getting this experience and also encouraging uh, either my ADC or my top laner to come get this experience because when these minions are dying, they're just dying for free. It's just like a wasted resource. So I would be walking mid. Looks like they're shoving it into you because this this is just never going to work. Even if you do happen to queue this guy here, there's no one to follow up. You guys just don't have the damage to burst of Vlad. So right. really all this is doing... Now, now once Lee Sid leaves, I would... I would stay top. You you all you don't want to be let the letting these waves crash and like nobody getting them at all. It's not even about getting right. the CS, not about getting the gold. Experience is very very valuable. 
especially at, in the support role, you want to be getting experience where you can because you're going to be... Uh, it's good that you went back up, by the way. Um, you're going to be the lowest level in the game pretty consistently. ADC and support. So just don't let these minions die for free. All right, we see Ari killed Teamster. We back out on the map. We asleep, bro? What are we doing here? I don't remember what I was doing, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It worked out, see? Yep, it worked out. Nice. Okay, it's a two for one. We win that. Tristan is getting great. Great push here. Yep, take a reset. Good job. All right, I, I need to see you build it. I need to be, see you buying way more control wards, by the way. I'm not sure okay. I've seen you place a single one this game, and that is very, very bad. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I have yet this game. So the game start, like I said, the game's kind of taking a turn for the worse. You guys start out really strong, but the game's starting to be close now. A lot of games are determined by who has better control of the river because every team is going to fight no matter what, every single dragon, every single baron, which means that they eventually have to come check this, especially if you have like a control ward here, a control ward here. They're going to get curious, just like the Lux got curious in the uh, in laning phase. They're going to do the same thing, and then that's when you can, as a pick champion, because that's what Nautilus is, that's when you can make your picks and have the highest impact on the game because... 25 minutes, like I said, everyone's starting to group up, starting to group for objectives. You want to get control of vision in the river. So control wards, control wards. Oof. All right, all right, all right, all right. So here, this shows a fundal, a, a fundamental, like lack of understanding of the state of the game. Your ADC just got hyper one shot, and you're trying to go in. You should be very thankful okay. that that Q didn't land. Because these guys aren't following up. I can tell you that. If you land this Q, yeah. you're by yourself. Because these guys, Tristano just died. You guys are running. This is, this is, a, this right. is a hardcore cut your losses angle. And it's okay to cut your losses. But if you double down, which you are, you're going to risk the Baron. So now you're going to die. And now instead of Tristana being dead and you running away, now two of you are dead. And that gives them an absolutely excellent opening for Baron. So I think that's definitely the biggest mistake you're making is just not reading the fights uh, correctly and just thinking that you you can be this like saving private Ryan style hero when instead of just like cutting your losses and letting Tristana be dead for 20 seconds now you've endangered every like endangered the whole game now luckily these guys are idiots and they both got caught by Galio but if this was a smarter team they just go instantly to Baron and you've lost the Baron okay. so just be willing to cut losses it, it really is okay too it's genuinely not a big deal until you make it a big deal by doubling down on it. Now this is just like fiesta nonsense going on. It's fine. It's silver. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So we're moving here. Now see, this would be an so excellent of time. This way, should I have towards uh, Baron instead for wards? Or... Um, getting a ward on Baron is is fine here because you know you're not in danger of it. But I don't think that they're like. I don't think they're an immediate threat of doing the Baron. I would be much more trying okay. to control the Dragon. So, like, buying a control word here and placing it here is, like, the easiest way to exert pressure on the enemy team. Because at some point, they have to come clear this. It may not be in the next 30 yeah. seconds, but by the time the next Dragon rolls around, they have to clear that. Which means that you guys could be stacking in this bush, or this bush, or this bush, or even this bush. Um, so, the easiest, just think about it that way... When, like, I know a lot of players don't like buying control wards, which is really weird to me, because, like, it's the easiest way to pressure a, an enemy team to come to a certain area. Like, eventually they have to clear that. Yeah. The flash, a little, little bit overkill, but it's okay. Yeah. As you get better with the champion, you'll, you'll learn the limits. Like, you, you definitely are already in... Well, I didn't know range. that my Q would have hit a broken tower either. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Oh, it actually let you keep your ulti, it looks like. Alright, so Ezreal's starting to get to the point of the game where, like, he has 16 kills. He is actually really, really hurting. So, you want to try your hardest to minimize the amount of free damage you take like this. 
here. Because you know you're not going in right here, right? You don't have your main damage dealer, or even, like, yeah. your secondary damage dealer and range. So, don't ever give them an opening like this, because even though it's only, like, a quarter of your health bar, that could, like, affect the next team fight. You having a quarter missing of your health. Uh, so just, you know, if you're not looking for the pick, don't, don't ever give them a chance to just chip away free damage. Because it's not a kill, but sometimes it's more important than the kill. So once again, we're just, we're just taking free damage. Now, we do see Ari bot, bot lane, so this could actually be a decent fight. If okay. she's here, instead of trying to hook out, honestly, at this point, even though you're now missing half of your health, it's kind of like the same thing we talked about in laning phase, is Nautilus is a little bit harder to kill than people think he is. Oof, that Israel's going to shred everything, isn't he? Alright, so this stage of the game is like, it's starting to become one of those everyone's kind of doing their own thing. All you can do is try yeah. to um, regain a little bit of that control by spamping for an objective. Because that's the best way to get like, you know, low elo players that are running around like five chickens with their heads cut off. I'm telling you, if you give them just the slightest bit of leadership, like, they follow it. And the easiest way to do that is to just, hey, let's group five for an objective. Okay. This is a really good catch. She, she has absolutely no reason to be there. Good catch, good catch. And we want to be a little careful because absolutely worst case scenario is that one, is, one of their assassins comes out of here, right? So we want to be a little careful yeah. about straying too far away from the rest of your team. But this is good. This is reasonable. We can also go get Baron Vision. This is good. Honestly, at this point, you should be spamping for the Baron. Realistically, you have like 40 seconds where Lux is dead right here after you kill her. Mm -hmm. uh, they all are resetting in the base because they, you know they just did the Dragon, so there's no reason for them to like be right here. Uh, it'd be a pretty decent Baron call. It might want to be one of those Baron calls where you call it and then turn. You know, you don't actually complete the Baron, but you're just using it as a way to get them to fight you 4v5. But getting this vision is, is fine. Uh, it's good. We see Galio bot. We assume someone is going to have to go answer that Galio. Ezreal is on the map. You just always want to be, like, kind of running through the information that you have. The information that you are privy to. Because uh, that's going to inform your decisions. Now... This is kind of a weird angle, but... Yeah. Alright, they killed our Baron damage. Or Baron vision. We see Vladimir bot. So that gives us an opening to be standing forward and be looking for a pick right here. Oh my god, that is real damage. Okay, Galio is bot, but he has his ultimate. You should be looking for an angle here. You should be spamping your Lee Sin to be coming for the flank. Your mid laner can get there before mid their mid laner can. Or their top laner. Vlad is actually top. Chris thing has R up, huh? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, he ults you in. So if you can get into the center of him, get like a two-man ulti. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. Right here, right here. He's already slowed. You know which way he's going. So that right there, you should be posturing for a hook. So now it's going to... Now it's starting to be a little bit more... Oh, Vlad is still not there. We should 100% be posturing for a hook. He's giving you so many openings. So just... Train yourself to be recognizing these openings. Four is a lower number than five, right? You guys have five people yeah. here. Now they have three. Two people bot. There is no way they should ever be able to... Okay, there we go. Galio's pulling the trigger. Here we go. This should be you, though. Do what Galio did. That is your role. Okay. Okay, we missed our hook, but that's fine. This can still work. All right, now we're starting to get a little bit into the over chasey territory because we know Kha'Zix right. and Vlad are coming through here. So this is where we should be spamping off. Hey, we won that. We killed Lux. Let's go pressure Baron. Let's go do something. But I think we're probably going to over chase into Vlad and Kha'Zix here. Yeah. So j just again, cutting your losses is fine. But... The most important thing I want you to realize is that you should be pulling the trigger on these scenarios. And the okay. more you play the champion, more the more you play the game, and more you come to understand your role in an in-depth way, uh, the more you will be able to recognize when players are out of position. Because these players are out of position. 
Galio recognized it. Yeah. But you're not always going to have a mid laner that has the tool set to be able to do this. Like, luckily, you have a Galio and not a Vigar or something. And you're able to start the fight off, but that should be you. That should 100% be you. Okay. Alright, so let's see what happens here. They get inhib. Yeah, at this point, the game is pretty much already over. You guys are going to bleed out a little bit. You're going to come real close to killing Ezreal, but Ezreal's a twerpy champion, so you can't kill him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at, at this point, the, the game is essentially over. Um, so I'm just going to kind of let this play out and see if I see anything else that is coachable. Um, and kind of open the floor to you to see if you have any questions about anything that I said. No, I don't think I have any questions. I think you explained everything pretty well. Okay. Um... Well, like we like we talked about, I, I definitely wanted to do a Nautilus coaching session, not to try to make you look bad by any means, because I know your Morgana is much better than this. Uh, the stats yeah. tell that picture. Uh, but because I think that if you could transition into playing these types of champions, you're going to have a way higher impact. Morgana is like a high impact champion, but she's most efficient when you're using her as a counter pick champion. She's most efficient when you let a champion when you let the enemy lock in something like Nautilus. Or Leona, uh -huh. and then you counterpick them with Morgana. She's not great at like first picking, whereas like Nautilus and Leona and Thresh and Blitzcrank, you can first pick them every single game. Right. Um. One game we had, I don't know, it was a couple days ago, a few days ago maybe. We had our jungler's name was Artful Bot, and I swear he picked a Mumu, and all he did was just keep running up and down in jungle, <laughs> farming. Oh. Uh, he never came. Like any lanes or anything. Yeah, there, there's, you're going to get players like that, and all you can do is just try not to be that player in your future games. <laughs> because right. I guarantee, no, you know, it, it definitely sucks to get players like that, but I guarantee that from someone else's perspective, they've had you lock in Nautilus, and they're like, yeah, my support, all he did was like walk back and forth. Like he never roamed, he never, you know, engaged, right. he never did stuff like that. So that definitely sucks to get players like that. But all you can do is make sure that over on a long enough timeline, that you are not the worthless support more than the enemy worthless support or more than the enemy support because that's all you have to do all you have to do is on a long enough timeline be on average more useful than the enemy support so like in this situation what, should i be doing this or should i be like trying at, to ward? at this point your, your options are so limited that it would be like ridiculous for me to like try to say that you can still 1v9 this game like you guys are shoved in uh all you can do is clear these waves uh, as a rule of thumb, you can be warding your enemy jungle, but like it, it's way past like absurd for me to be like, yeah, yeah, just go ward dragon and baron because on your way to right. do that, you're going to get picked and die because they're so much stronger than you. Like they have control right. of all this. Like they have wards here and probably wards here, probably wards here and here. So all you can do is like hope for a miracle play, Lisa and steals baron, and be warding this. That's that's the best thing you can be doing is helping them clear waves and warding as as much as you can safely. So Timo went for a risky play. I, I don't. I have no idea what this guy's doing, bro. <laughs> yeah, but we we don't have control of this area of the map, so like we just can't do it. Now, if this was Elder Dragon, Elder Drag, if the enemy team gets Elder Dragon, ninety nine point nine percent of the time it's over. So yeah, at that point, take the risk, leave the base, try to contest them for it, but. I mean, taking a fight like this, like, the, the risk-to-reward scenario is just so not in your favor. I mean, you guys are probably just going to get slaughtered and, and end the game here, but... Yeah. So, yeah, when you ask, what should I be doing? Pretty much just encouraging your team to turtle. Turtling is a, it's a defensive strategy where you pretty much just, you know, get under your shell, hope the enemy team goes for a dive that they shouldn't, and just play super, super defensively. Because coming out of your base... While super minions are pushing in and taking a fight like this, it's just never going to be in your favor. Um, and like I said, the risk reward is okay. Let's say you do you do win this fight by some miracle, you kill three of them and they kill one of you. You still can't do anything with it. Whereas if they win the fight, they end the game. So right. the reward for them for taking that fight is much much greater. Um, but yeah, overall, 
I, I really just want to stress the three biggest things that I think you should be doing is continuously be thinking about the absolute worst case scenario, because once you start doing that, uh, you're, you, I mean, it, it seriously, it like it changes everything. It greases the gears in your brain. You'll start looking at the game completely differently. Uh, two, stop letting them disrespect you in laning phase. Champions like Nautilus should never ever be afraid to hook in on a champion like Lux, especially if you have an ADC that can follow up. Now it may be a little bit different if you have a, you know, Ash who's way back here, because an Ash who's back here can't get over here very easily. But a Tristana can right. jump right over in two seconds. So this is a very, very aggro laning phase for you guys. And I'm not seeing nearly enough aggression. Uh, be ready for your level two. Be walking forward even before your ADC hits it so that you can abuse it. Um, and just continue growing to understand your role in the game as the hard engage support. Don't, let, don't be waiting for okay. your Galio to do it. You see these two guys over here? You understand that it's a 5v3? Boom. Let's start that fight. Uh, okay. Also that, and once you learn to kind of cut losses a little bit and stop doubling down and uh, making situations even worse that have are, that are already a losing fight, uh, you're gonna you're gonna climb hard, man. You're hitting gold very very soon. I can tell the fundamentals are there. Uh, you just need a little bit of well, you need a little bit of uh, to to pull back on the gung ho ness in some areas and more gung ho ness in other areas. And once you, once you, I know you say you don't play it a lot of Nautilus. Once you played it like five to 10 more games, you're going to very quickly learn which scenario you need, which. Okay. So, um, if you don't have any other questions, that's, that's going to conclude the session. If at any point, like you're thinking tonight, you think of something that you should have asked, just DM me, you know where to find me, bro. Yeah. And, um, um, what about like, okay. So this game is like, it's a 35 minute game, 36 minute mm -hmm. game. Where, how should a ward score be like around right now? I would honestly... Like I know mine's in the 40s. Well, one, I, I would stop caring about vision score at all. This score means absolutely nothing. It's just a something for people to feel good about. The only the okay. only thing that I would say... I mean, look at this. Like, It looks like you have a pretty good vision score, right? But we concluded earlier right. that you didn't buy a single control ward. So like, right. this it, it wasn't good control of vision, regardless of what that number says. So I would never right. care. I never, ever mention vision score. The only time I ever bring it up in coaching sessions is if it's zero. Or if you're like, okay. you know, way below everyone else. Because that just means you're forgetting to use your trinket at all. Well, so some of my games, like I watch or I won't... I don't watch, but like I'll see the vision afterwards, mm -hmm. and I'll be like up like mid sixties, and everyone else is like eighteen, twenty. Yeah, like that. Low. And and especially the longer the games go, because the support has access to like five wards yeah. when everyone else only gets one or two, you're gonna you're gonna see those deficits. But I really wouldn't. I would stop caring about the vision score and more start caring more crit like critically thinking about if you're actually using using vision correctly. Okay. Like doing this, and then uh, yeah, every back should I be buying uh, control wards? Uh, pretty much every back, yes, because you're usually going to have like, if you have like 80 gold left over, do not leave base with 80 gold. The only time you shouldn't be okay. buying control wards is if it's going to like delay your next item. Like if you have the option of getting like a Kindle gem or a control ward, probably get the Kindle gem. Okay. But yeah, you will typically just because of the way that support economy is designed, you'll you'll usually have like. 70, 80, 100 gold left over. Absolutely buy a control ward. Okay. All right, man. Well, like I said, just absolutely hit me up if you have any questions at all. I'm looking sure. forward to seeing you in gold in the next week and a half, tops. Now, I feel like I'm in ELO hell, though. Nah, nah, nah. nah. Really there is no ELO, ELO hell, bro. You, There is no ELO hell. You play Leona, you play if Nautilus, you'll be in gold in a week and a half. Guaranteed. Okay. All right, brother. Well, uh, I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, no problem. Hope this helps. Later, bub. Thank you.